Hey, kia ora. Uh, all the way from Dunedin here, South Island of New Zealand. I've got lots of messages and requests to make a video about how you do a basic setup for a new fly fisherman or someone who just wants to get into fly fishing and not quite sure if that's a thing for them. You don't need to spend a lot of money, that's rule number one. You must have a budget, a rough budget in your mind. Um, for me, I think a good starting budget would be about $300 and you could get yourself pretty decent gears, you know, with that budget. Uh, all you need are five main things. Number one, you need a fly rod. Any budget rod such as the Airflow or the ones you bought from AliExpress or from China, they're fine. I've caught lots of fishes on them before. And then you need a fly reel. Uh, this is obviously a very expensive fly reel, but you can get a cheap one from China as well. You know, there's, there are cheap uh, reels from Max Catch. I think that's one from China and they're selling it for less than 50 New Zealand dollars. And next, you will need fly line. So that's the third item, fly line. Uh, that's a must. Without a fly line, you can cast because fly fishing, you're basically casting the weight of your line to present your fly, which is pretty much weightless. You can get decent fly lines from uh, Scientific Angler, Rio, um, Airflow. Usually you can get them for less than a hundred dollars. And the fourth item would be uh, a leader or some kind of tippet. So usually I would use some tippet uh, to construct my own leader but you can also use you know pre-made leaders tapered leaders uh, they are a, a bit more pricey probably in the range of 15 to 25 dollars and lastly you need some flies what a beginner fly there's no such thing as a beginner fly, but I think as a beginner, it's easier to fish with nymphs. So make sure you have the common nymphs available in your fly box, something like hair and copper, hair ear, uh, pheasant tail. These are very common and popular nymphs that you can find in any fly fishing shop. And if you like to go for dry fly, go for something like Adam's parachute. That's simple, easy, and you wouldn't you know, make much mistakes. If you're going for a dry fly, make sure you have something like a a floating this just to make sure that your dry fly stays floating for a lot longer now for the setup obviously you need some backing in the reel and normally i go with a 20 pound backing line of about what 80 to 100 feet long depending on the size of your reel you have your fly line in there and at the end of your fly line normally it comes with a welded loop if it doesn't have a welded loop you have two options either you tie a nail knot or you put on a braided loop in this case here i've got a braided loop so I've got my leader attached to a tippet ring. I think having a tippet ring is a lot easier to fish. And if you use a tippet ring, go for the smallest one that you can find. Probably what 1.5 to 2 millimeters uh, is less likely to spook the fish and it's less likely to sink your dry fly. And finally, from your tippet ring, you can tie your tippet. Uh, so normally I go with something like a 4X or a 5X. If you're streamer fishing, putting a heavy streamer, then you want at least a 2 or a 3x. Now, in terms of the length of your leader and your tippet, there is no hard and fast rule. But for beginners, I would suggest you go with something 5 feet long leader or 6 feet long. Um, especially the ones that comes pre-made and tapered for you. Uh, anything longer than that, like the 9 or 12 feet, I think it just makes it a bit messier for you to cast. And you're going to get yourself in a lot of tangle. And for the tippet, uh, I would go with about four feet long. If you're nymphing with two flies, then you can tie your next tippet about 24 inches or 36 inches below the other fly. Now for the knot to put your fly onto your line is to use the clinch knot. This is the most effective knot. So basically I put that through the loop and I form a wee loop with my finger and you want to run that sort of about five or six turns three four five six to be lucky and then i put it back through that first loop that you've formed hold it there and pull it down there you've got it a clinch knot now because i'm using a dry dropper setup i've got to put a second fly underneath the first dry fly in this case i'm putting on a nymph so I'm doing the clinch knot again and make sure you tie it off nicely.
and the excess tippet can be clipped off and make sure you dispose it appropriately. Now lastly, um, some people ask, do I need an indicator? It's all entirely up to you. I would suggest yes, you know, if you're nymphing, use an indicator. It just makes it a lot easier for you to detect the bites. Otherwise, you'll be watching your floating fly line uh, for any kind of indication that a fish took your nymph. Uh, there are many indicators available in New Zealand. We've got the New Zealand wool indicator. I think that's my favorite. Otherwise, you can get wool indicators that comes pre-made like that. It comes with a rubbery loop. Uh, the only problem with the rubbery loop is it makes your cast a lot less efficient. Uh, and sometimes it sinks the line. Now, when it comes to the cast, I suggest you watch a few other videos available. Um, I'm a self-taught fly fisherman and I struggle, to be honest with you. Um, I struggled for nearly two years before I found the right way to cast properly, try to get rid of my bad habits. So here I've driven four hours to get to this place um, to try out the rig that I just showed you early on in the video. I'm gonna try it out here in one of the tributaries of Lake Wakatipu in Queenstown. Got it. Nice brown. So this is a setup with a double nim rig and a wool indicator. So it was just right over the seams. This is a good fish. Not that big, but definitely a good fish. Yeah, oh, this took the point five. So you really want to bring the fish up ahead of you and let the current do the work. Great. Awesome. So with that setup that I had early on, uh, it's straightforward, simple, easy to tie and makes minimal mistake. And here you're rewarded with a beautiful high country trout. Such a beautiful fish. That was awesome. So stay tuned until our next episode. I'll still be fly fishing around Queenstown, but this time inspired by the Japanese traditional Tanago fishing. Tanago fishing is a completely different sport. They're aiming to catch the smallest fish. So my goal will be to catch the smallest trout in Queenstown using a variety of fly fishing techniques I have. Also, I'll be sharing with you my experience with my family in one of the local Japanese restaurants with some delicious cuisine.